Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here, and thank you for tuning in to another video. Today we're checking out Aurelian Soul and have a guide for him in Path of Champions. If you enjoy all this Path of Champions coverage, definitely like and subscribe, and let's get into it. We're going to start off with a brief overview of the champions so you know if they're worth the time and resources to unlock them. Up first, we have Overpowered. Aurelian Soul is the first four star champion in the game, and he is by far the most broken champion there is. So if you want to feel like a raid boss and just be the most broken thing possible, then he's definitely going to be the right champion for you. Next up, we have Created Cards. This is a key part of Aurelian Soul's playstyle. You get a lot of benefits for making more created cards and playing them. And this also helps give your playstyle a bit of randomness because quite often you don't know exactly what created card you're going to create. And so this can really help keep things interesting despite the fact you're such a overpowered champion. Next up then we have item generation. From your star powers, you're able to put rare and epic items onto all of your created cards for free, which again, just further increases your powers, but also increases the randomness because you don't know what item you're going to be generating in every single game. Next up then we have stack champions. So with Aurelian Soul you want to stack normally as many champions as you can and so if you enjoy matches where you're just fielding an entire board of champions to overwhelm the enemy then again this is the perfect champion for you. Up next then we have massive cost reduction. This ties back to both your created cards and your stacking of champions but every time you're playing created cards you're reducing down the cost of all champions by a massive amount. So this lets you cheat out both Aurelian Soul and any other champions you have for a massively reduced cost. Last up then, we also have Auto Level Up. So if you're worried with all these champions you're playing that you'd actually have to spend any time trying to level them up, that's not the case here. Again, from your star powers, you're able to immediately level up any champions you play, which just further incentivizes you to stack more champions and also ties into you just being so overpowered. All right, that's it for the overview. Let's go in game to further explain some of the points we touched on here. All right, in game now, you see we have Aurelian Soul at level 30 with three stars. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's not actually possible to get him any higher. So if you're not aware, the way you get Aurelian Soul fragments is by completing the monthly challenges. Outside of buying a bundle from the store, the monthly challenges are the only ways you can unlock Aurelian Soul Fragments, and since I've fully completed all the monthlies for this month, I'm not able to get any more to unlock his 4 star until the next set of monthlies come out. Now we've not had any confirmation from Riot, but it is estimated that Aurelian Soul will be the rewards for the monthly challenges for the next several months. So you have a good amount of time to try to unlock and star him up over the next couple months. Now Riot hasn't said what will happen once he moves out of the monthly challenge rewards, but they haven't said that this is going to be the only way you can ever unlock Aurelian Soul. I think that's unlikely, but again, Riot hasn't said anything, and they don't really need to since you do have a couple months currently to work on unlocking and leveling him up. For those star powers though, for your first star power, when you play a created card, reduce the cost of allied champions everywhere by one. If you have the three star, then that goes to two. And then when you play a champion, level them up, you're welcome. So immediately when you play a champion, they automatically level up, which is just very powerful. And then whenever you're playing those created cards, it's reducing down all of your champions, even ones you're able to generate. With this everywhere, it doesn't matter how you get the champion or if you create them, they're all going to be cost reduced. Now for your two star, you get that plus one starting mana, and now you get a rare or epic item on all of your created cards. So the first time you create any cards, it will show up with a rare or epic item. Important to note, this only happens the first time you create that card. So if you had like a power that creates this card every single round, it's not going to get a rare or epic item every round, just the first time that you see it. Now, once we're able to unlock his last star power, now when you play a unit, double its stats, and then if it's Aurelian Soul, the skies descend upon all your pathetic enemies. The skies descend, deal 15 damage to all enemies. So once he's at his four stars, all of your unit stats just get completely doubled. And then every time you play Aurelian Soul, he does a essential board wipe to destroy the entire enemy board. So these are all very powerful. But let's go back and actually take a look at Aurelian Soul himself. So he's a 10 cost 10 10 with that spell shield and fury because he's a dragon. And then play invoke a celestial card that costs seven or more. We'll touch on the invoke and celestial cards 
in a moment, but just remember that he is going to be generating a random one that, or a random selection of three that you can pick from that are going to be seven cost or more. And then round start, create a random celestial in hand. Now his level up condition doesn't really matter too much because as long as you have his first star power, Aurelian Soul and all other champions will immediately level up. If you don't have that though, round end, your allies have 20 or more total power. Once he levels up though, he goes to an 11-11 and now all of your celestial cards, so the cards you get from evoking, they all cost nothing. So essentially you can play Aurelian Soul and then you have an even more massive cost reduction for a lot of these different created cards and he's still doing his normal effects of invoking when you play him and then creating a random celestial card at round start now for his champion spell it is that skies descend this is the same effect that goes off once you get him to his four stars but as you see i cost two less for each dragon or celestial ally you have and then deal 15 damage to all enemies so that's normally just going to kill all enemy units unless you're going up against like the enemy Aurelian Soul. Remember that even though he has a very high cost because of your star powers, you're going to be dramatically reducing that cost and normally can still play him in the first couple rounds. For Aurelian Soul though, Invoke is a major part of his kit because that Invoke is making created cards. So let's go look at how Invoke really works. All right, so you see here, these are all the celestial cards. So when you invoke, you're going to be given a random selection of three of these cards. Now, sometimes when you invoke, there will be certain parameters, like some cards say they're only gonna give you options that are three or less. So you see here, these are the cards you'd be getting from one of those selections. Or if you take a card like Aurelian Soul, who says he's going to do seven or more, that means you have just this selection down here. Now remember, it's still a random selection and you're given three options when you invoke. And so this is the main way you're going to be generating created cards, which remember when you play a created card, it reduces down the cost of all your champions everywhere. And then two, Whenever you make a created card, it's getting a rare or epic item. So this really gives you a large amount of randomness because when you invoke, you never know exactly what you're going to be getting because you don't know what cards you're going to get, but also you don't know what upgrades are going to go on those cards. This can help keep things fresh. Normally what happens with a lot of the overpowered decks is every game feels the exact same. Normally with Aurelian Soul though, you know you're always going to win, but other than that, you don't know how exactly things are going to play out because there is so much randomness going on in your kit. Now, I'm not going to go through and break down all of these Celestial cards, but a couple to point out, these two are very good because they cost nothing. So being able to play them for free and then just get that cost reduction on all of your champions is very strong. Down here, written in the stars, draw a champion, reduce its cost by one and grant it two, two. Having some extra champion draw is very good, especially because you're likely going to have many different champions in your deck, so being able to draw one out is nice. The Traveler you see right here, play, invoke. Sometimes it can be nice to have one of your created cards make more created cards. Down here, the Scourge, this is very powerful, really helping you end the game. It has Overwhelm, but then attack, give allies 2-2 and Overwhelm this round. So when you invoke with Aurelian Soul, if you see this, this is normally the selection you wanna get. And then there's also Living Legend. So fill your hand with random fleeting celestial cards, refill your mana to full. So this can be good, but don't be kind of baited into thinking this is the best possible card. If your hand is already pretty full, then this actually won't necessarily generate too many cards for you. Because remember, it's just filling your hand to full. So if your hand is already pretty full, or if just playing the Scourge is gonna help you end the game that round, that can really help you out. But if your hand is pretty empty, then Living Legend can be very, very good for you. Remember also that all of these cards count as Celestial, so when you play Aurelian Soul and he levels up, you'll be able to play all of these for free. So even these two down here that cost 10 mana, once you have Aurelian Soul on the board, they cost zero mana. Which is also why Living Legend refilling your mana to full often doesn't actually matter that much because everything you're playing is already free. So just remember, every time you invoke, you're given a random selection of these cards. You have three options to choose from, and whenever you see it talks about a Celestial card in Aurelian Souls deck, it's talking about any of these. All right, with that out of the way, let's take a look at his starting deck. So up first we have Behold the Infinite. So zero cost burst invoke. So just giving you a random selection of three of those cards we showcased. We have the Spacey Sketcher. So one cost studded leather, so two, two. Play discard one to invoke a Celestial card that costs three or less. 
very good card being able to give you a cheap created card to play to start get that cost reduction going on mountain goat so two cost three four strike create a gem in hand so that gem going to count as a created card so it is going to get a rare or epic item but then again cheap created card for you to be able to play and get some of that cost reduction going on next up then we have the starry scamp so two cost two two I cost two less if you behold a Celestial. So those Celestial cards, all the ones you get from Invoke, as long as he sees one of those in your hand, you can play him for free. Now he also has uh, the Ninja Tabby giving him Elusive and the Bonded Bucklers. So support, give my supported ally 1-1 one, one, and my keywords this round. So essentially, he's able to give whatever he supports Elusive as well. So very strong effect right there. Next up then we have the Solari Priestess. So three cost, two, two. Daybreak, so it has to be the first card you play in the round. Invoke a celestial card that costs four, five, or six. So very mid-tier of all those different celestials. And with that locket, it has barrier. Next up then we have the Wounded White Flame. So three cost three, six with Fury and Faded. Now while this is a decent card, this is normally the card you want to cut from your deck because it's not creating any created cards. That's really what you want to be focusing on. You'd rather spend your mana playing a created card or generating created cards, because that's gonna give you that cost reduction for all of your champions. So really solid card, normally never play it though. Next up then we have the Celestial Wonder. So four costs with that mana potion, fast, stun two enemies. So some really strong control, little on the expensive side, but being able to have a fast answer to the enemy attacking you or something like that can be quite handy. Next up then we have Star Shaping. So five cost burst, Ardent Sensor, grant the top ally in your deck 3-3. Invoke a Celestial card that costs seven or more, and then heal an ally or your Nexus five. So some decent sustain there. And again, being able to get some invokes going to make some more created cards. And then last up, we have Aurelian Soul. So a pretty strong starting deck, as you would expect. Let's go take a look at when you get some of these upgrades. So for the champion levels, up first, Behold the Infinite goes from a 2 cost to a 1 cost because that mana potion. Mountain Goat gets that giant spell, really helping it stay on the board a little bit longer. The Wounded White Flame at level 6 gets the Savage Shield. At 9, Solari Priestess gets that Locket of the Iron Solari, so they get Barrier. At 12, Celestial Wonder gets that Mana Potion, going down to a 4 cost, quite nice. At 15, Starry Scamp gets that Ninja Tabby, so they get uh, Elusive. At 18, the Spacey Sketcher gets that Studded Leather, getting, letting them be a little bit stronger. This is actually quite a nice upgrade because this is one of the cards you really are going to be playing very often. Star Shaping at 21, you get that Ardent Sensor, which is alright. 24, Behold the Infinite gets another Mana Potion, so now it goes to a zero cost. 27, Starry Scamp gets that Bonded Bucklers, so that it can now support and give whoever they're supporting that Elusive. So that's it for how you're going to get these upgrades. Normally the way you're playing is you want to use your Behold the Infinite, and your Spacey Sketcher trying to get the cheapest created cards possible. You're trying to play the Starry Scamp for free. And then when you're cutting cards, you normally want to cut the Wounded White Flame and then maybe the Celestial Wonder. If you're already pretty strong and you're noticing you're never really needing to stun the enemy, which happens actually fairly often, you could cut both of these cards. Solari Priestess is one that's kind of on the border. If you have other ways to generate created cards, so if you're getting like a power that gives you a created card at the start of every round, then you probably want to cut this. For one, the Daybreak is kind of an annoying mechanic, and then it's also invoking a fairly expensive card. Normally you're wanting to play the cheaper created cards, and you're only playing those higher cost Celestials when you already have Aurelian Soul on the board, so they're going to be free. So Solari Priestess is really one that is helpful in some games, but during some runs, they're kind of useless. You might want to consider cutting them as well. All right, let's go take a look at Relics then. So for Relics, the first one we really need to talk about is the Star Forged Gauntlets. Now this one is right now only available in the bundle on the store. Riot has said that this will be added to the pool of other relics you can get from the Golden Reliquaries, but for right now, they're only in the store bundle. Now these were pretty much tailor-made for Aurelian Soul, so if I'm Titanic, which means have 8 health or damage, which Aurelian Soul is 10 of each, so he's Titanic, plus one starting mana, that alone, massive, really helping your champions ramp up a lot faster. And then you can find level two champions when you invoke or manifest 
even if I'm not in play. So now what happens is every time you're invoking, there's a chance that you'll have a fourth option that is a level two champion. Those level two champions are going to count as a created card. So they are going to get a rare or epic item from your star powers. And then also when you play them, they will reduce down the cost of all of your other champions by two. But since they're a champion, they also have that cost reduction. So if you played other created cards, they're also going to be very cheap. Also the fact that this is appearing as a fourth option. So you now have even more options to choose from very nice and really ties into your invoke playstyle. So a really fun relic, really works great for Aurelian Soul. That being said, Aurelian Soul is still perfectly fine without these. It's not like you need these to do well with Aurelian. So don't feel obligated to buy these because your Aurelian Soul won't be good without these. For some other relics I like to run with, Crown Guard Inheritance when I level up Rally from your star powers. Every time you play a champion, they immediately level up, including Aurelian Soul. So this just means as soon as you play him, you get a free rally. So normally with Aurelian Soul, you play him and you just end the game. That's also with the Deceiver's Crest. When I level up, create a copy of my champion spell in hand, it costs zero this round. So that champion spell is going to be the Skies Descend. Now this is a build that will be pretty useless once you have Aurelian Soul to four stars, because he's going to be playing this spell anyways as soon as you play him. But if you don't have him at four stars yet, pretty fun because then you can yeah, play this guy's descent, dealing 15 damage to all enemies. So you play him, you get a rally, you clear the enemy board, you attack and end the game. Now for some other relics that also work out quite well, Arcane Comet is pretty good. Round start, create a fleeting falling comet in hand. So this is a celestial card, which means when you're playing Aurelian Soul, it's going to be free. So if you want to go for a little bit more of a slower play style, you can use this to obliterate the enemy. And since this is a created card, it's going to be reducing down the cost of all your champions. Granted, if you're playing Aurelian Soul, it's probably not really needed anymore, but this will also get a rare or epic item. So a bit of a slower play style, but still pretty good. Guardian's Trinket, Adventure Start, add two copies of a random champion to your deck and attach random epic items to it, giving you more champions to play and have some more cost reduction. Very nice right there. Stalker's Blade, when I'm summoned, I strike the weakest enemy. So getting a strike off, normally guaranteeing a kill, and then because of that fury, that's going to help you scale up. Again, not really needed if you're using the Deceiver's Crest, because that's going to really kill everyone anyways. Star Gem, allied champions have 1-1 one, one, and cost 2 less. This will be good for buffing up your champions. Normally, since Aurelian Soul is the most expensive champion in the game, that cost reduction is not really going to help you because all of your other champions are probably already going to be free. But if you just want to buff up the other champions, that can be decent. Tempest Blade might level up stun all enemies. This can help you get a board-wide stun. Again, though, because of the Deceiver's Crest and playing that Sky's Descend, pretty much everyone's going to be dead anyways. The Card Master's Gambit. This one is actually pretty important. 1-1, one, one, and when you win a counter without taking any Nexus damage, earn one reroll. Now, since you're so powerful, it is pretty easy to win without taking any Nexus damage. And rerolls are actually quite important for Aurelian Soul. We'll touch on this a bit more when we talk about powers, but getting the right powers will help speed up your game plan immensely, especially one of the powers that lets you have a created card every single round. And then with Aurelian Soul, as you see, we're not really touching on a lot of the different relics. Because you're so powerful, you don't really need the effects that a lot of these relics give you. Now, definitely still go and test out the different relics, play with them, find what you like best. But a lot of the different relics, while it can maybe give you a fun play style, they're just going to be worse than either this combination right here or going for a combination with reroll relics. So the Card Master's Gambit can really help you out getting some more rerolls throughout your entire match. Grand General's Counter Plan, round start, create a fleeting copy of me in hand. If you want to be able to play a Skies Descend every single round, this is definitely the way to go. Troll King's Crown, allies have Overwhelm, can be nice, but from your invokes, you could make the Scourge, which gives all your units Overwhelm anyways, or with the Skies Descend, you're not actually getting blocked out since the entire enemy board is dead, and so Overwhelm is a little bit irrelevant there. As far as common relics, the Chameleon's Necklace, game start creating two copies of me in your deck. Decent if you want to try to make sure you're drawing your Aurelian Soul, but really for common relics, you want to be using the Z Drive prototype. Adventure, start with two extra rerolls. This is probably going to be your best bet for common relics. Now, as far as maybe some best builds, 
This is what I would definitely go for monthly challenges since monthly challenges don't have any powers. So definitely do this here. This also can work out well in adventures, but sometimes making sure you get the right powers could be more important. So maybe swapping out the Crown Guard Inheritance and Deceiver's Crest with some Z Drive prototypes or the Card Master's Gambit could be a little bit better for you because those powers that give you a created card every single round are just so powerful for you. Now, if you have the Starforge Gauntlets, you probably always want to keep those equipped on Aurelian Soul, just because they're essentially tailor-made for him. So if you have it, probably good to always equip that, regardless of what you are running. All right, that's it for some of the more important relics to touch on. Let's go talk about what powers you want to be looking for, what support champions you might also want to be looking for, some cards to look for in shops, and then finally we'll finish with our ranking of the champion. I bet you can't guess where he ranks in his region or tier list or anything like that. All right, taking a look at powers now. Up first, we have a selection of the different powers that give you a created card every single round. So the Craftsman Favor, round start creative fleeting, time and dedication in hand. Counterfeit production, round start creative fleeting, zero cost counterfeit coffers in hand. Really nice there, because that's not gonna cost anything. And then memory game, create a fleeting copy of the last non-fleeting card you played. All of these are giving you a created card to play every single round. Now there are some other powers that do the same thing. And so any of those powers that just generate a fleeting card at the start of the round is really what you wanna be looking for. Because remember from your star powers, every time you're playing one of these, you're just reducing down the cost of all of your champions everywhere by one or two mana, which is pretty massive. Now you're normally gonna be wanting to play created cards from the cards in your deck as well, but getting any or multiple of these powers really helps speed up your win condition and can honestly get to the point where you're just playing Aurelian Soul round one and it gets really crazy. Because remember, all of these, since they're created cards, are going to be getting those rare and epic items on them as well. So these are all very, very strong. Definitely pick up any of these if you see them with Aurelian Soul. Next up then, to crush, allies have Overwhelm. Just always a solid power to have, especially when you're having such large units. Stabilize when you summon a champion, summon an exact ephemeral copy of it. You're playing a lot of different champions, so just getting a free copy of them, even if it's ephemeral every single time, can be quite fun to play around with. And then Domination Round Start Rally, again, just a very good, solid power that lets you end games much faster. Next up then, Wild Inspiration, your created cards cost one less. Very important since you're trying to create as many created cards as possible. Spell Slinger, all your spells cost one less. You have a good amount of spells and you're generating more from your different invokes or manifests, so really nice to have. Also remember that with Wild Inspiration and Spell Slinger, these will reduce down most of those powers that give you a created card, ones like the Blade's Edge or the Forge one, both of those cost one mana. So having either Wild Inspiration or Spell Slinger will then make those free, which is even more powerful. Sorcery, Round Start, Refill Your Spell Mana, hitting a lot of the same points as Wild Inspiration and Spell Slinger, just making sure you have the mana to play the spells when you need to play them. All right, that's it for the general rundown on powers. Now there's still plenty of other powers that will help you out. These are just some of the most important ones. Next up then, let's take a look at support champions. Now really with Aurelian Soul, you just wanna be grabbing almost every champion you see, but when you're looking at a champion, especially for the support position, you really wanna be considering two things. First up, created cards. Does this champion make created cards that can then cheat out other champions? And then two, do they have a strong level two effect? Since your champions are gonna level up as soon as you play them, if they have a strong level two effect, that can be very, very nice. Cause some champions have a very strong effect that's balanced by being very hard to achieve, but you don't need to work on achieving it since it just happens for free for you. So up first for some champions, we have Aurelia. Now this is one that probably a lot of people would be surprised by, but she actually makes a surprising amount of created cards and can really help cheat out other champions later. Also, she is pretty cheap, so you can normally cheat her out in the first round or two and then use all those created cards to then cheat out all of your other champions. Next up then we have Udyr. He's a bit of a balance of he makes more created cards and he has a pretty strong level two effect that still ties into creating more cards. So he's another solid champion. Then we have Victor. Victor goes very well with created cards and then since he immediately levels up, he actually reduces down the cost of all of your other credit cards by one. 
and so he's definitely very strong and parries very well with you. Next up then, we have Maokai. Now, unfortunately, I've not been able to test Maokai in game, but he has a strong level up condition where he obliterates the enemy deck, so they're left with just a couple cards. So you can normally win by the enemy just running out of cards. I've heard a lot of people talk about that. Sadly, I haven't tested it myself, but it is a very strong level two effect. And then last up, we have Karma. Being able to play her and then have her immediately start doubling all of your spells is pretty awesome. Normally you have to wait to the end of the game for that to happen, but that's not the case here. Now I know there's plenty of other awesome champions to look out for, and really you want to be grabbing almost all the champions, but when you're considering a champion, especially maybe the choice between a couple different ones, try to grab ones that have created cards or ones that have a very strong level 2 effect. Next up, let's look at some cards you might want to look out for. So here on the left first, we have the Bandal Tellstones. Now it doesn't actually matter that they're the Bandal ones, it's just any of the Tellstones. They're all a one cost card that then creates a selection of other created cards. So being able to have a cheap card that generates more created cards is quite nice and can be handy. So pick up any of these Tellstones when you see them. Trinket Trade, very similar. One cost burst, manifest a Autopus, or one of two spells from your regions that cost three or less. So this one is really nice because it's manifesting either a cheap unit or some very cheap spells. And remember with all of these, if they're creating a card, that card is reducing down all your champions, but also getting epic and rare items on it. Now this trinket trade also had the effect of storm calling, manifest a titanic unit and summon two sigils of the storm that manifest making even more created cards for you. And remember, if you have these Starforge gauntlets, Every time you invoke or manifest, you have a chance to also get a champion that you can choose as well. So really good card to look out for. Nora with Iceborne Gauntlets, cheap champion that you could pick up. Normally you'd be able to play this for free. And it also has that very strong effect of just taking out the strongest enemy target. As Aurelian Soul, you're gonna see champions as rewards from adventures or in shops much more frequently. Next here we have Sivir. Again, just a solid champion you could pick up to help your roster. And then last up, we have the Calculated Creations. So two cost burst, create a selection of different units. And then this also had evoke on it. So you play this, it's creating cards for you. And then it's also invoking, making more created cards for you. So really these are what you wanna be looking out for in game. Not these cards specifically, but just any cheap cards that make other created cards or cards that just have invoke or manifest on them, especially if they're already invoking or manifesting. And then also just keep an eye out for any champions you see that you could pick up and add to your deck. All right, let's finish up with our ranking. So before level 20, S tier champion. After level 20, still a S tier champion. For their region, they're definitely the best. And then for both the pros and the cons, the same thing, ridiculously overpowered. Now that can be quite fun to play with, but some people get bored of just being too powerful. So if you're someone that doesn't like that sort of play style, then this is gonna be bad for you. But if you're someone that likes that, then this is going to be great for you. All right, that wraps up our guide for Aurelian Soul. We do have plenty of gameplay videos up on the channel. So if you want to see any gameplay of him, we definitely have you covered. If you like the video, definitely like and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day.